Okay, so I cannot be here today. My grandmother is moving into my house from hospice and I'm meeting with the hospice nurse. So I'm giving you a lecture that you can access to study for your final um, anytime you'd like. So hopefully this is very helpful for you and maybe I'll do more in the future. But um, getting into talking about Da Vinci, a little recap, and then Michelangelo. So let me just... Oh. Okay, so we talked about Da Vinci and um, talked about the Last Supper and how this is kind of the high renaissance, the peak. It looks kind of rough and falling apart because he experimented with oil paint and that was his thing, was being an inventor, not necessarily a painter. However, he was an amazing painter as we can see, so we have to imagine that it looks better, like here would be a recreation or here. Um, when you look at it, it has a lot of significance with uh, interpretations of the Bible and um, obviously Christ is in the center, but as far as art goes, he creates this space that is typical of the Renaissance using that perspective and the vanishing point. Um, but da Vinci is known for having the way his compositions are set up is completely different than other Renaissance painters. And we can see that you have these groups of three going on um, that he created intentionally separating. So two groups of three in here and two groups of three in here, and then he's in the center. Um, he's also sick pointing to wine and bread, which is, you know, obviously there's a lot of references in here uh, considering as far as religious things go. And then also more for moving on this idea of, you know, this is John, who is not the Virgin Mary, but she looks like it could be the Virgin Mary. So da Vinci was also known for blending this kind of adrogynous like image where it, you know, it can cross over into all different styles. So in sculpture and painting, Botticelli did the same thing where you have this iconic image that can transfer over into many different forms. And that's kind of another example of that. Um, but it's just a different composition with these three things of three sets of people where if you were looking at um, the last supper I showed you here, and here, right, this is for Angelico, they're all spaced equally apart. Um, they're sitting behind this table, but not in sets. There's no use of really the space that's not as believable like Da Vinci did. Um, and this was considered very believable for its time. So, and then you have this different setup. So that's why Da Vinci is like known. Plus he's known for bringing in the idea of the emotion, of the response, to the viewer like it's a caught in a moment so this is the moment that he says someone will one of you will betray me and then you have the expression on their face and you know a lot of stuff going on you know grabbing a knife and they're in shock and pointing is this to, from God you know there so there's a lot of different stuff going on and that's why da Vinci is considered one of the best painters is that he captured that moment Uh, we talked about Virgin of the Rocks and how there's two different ones. So this one we talked about how, and you guys noticed it right away, that it didn't really look like a Da Vinci. Uh, just different things, the way the shading is done, um, even the way the faces are drawn, that doesn't just have the feel that a Da Vinci would have. Um, and this is the comparison of the two where you obviously see that this one on the right is a Da Vinci and this one on the left is not really sure. Could be a Da Vinci, could be one he started, could be one that he had studies finish is more the common kind of thought that it's not 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 a Da Vinci, but it's not uniquely his. Um, also, there's these little add-ons that you might notice this like Halo and the Cross where the other one doesn't. And Da Vinci was known for not doing the that kind of thing with the Halos and stuff because he was taking a common look, a common person, a common scene, um, and making it become like this religious 
aspect and even in the Last Supper you can kind of see the same thing where it doesn't necessarily we obviously know it's Christ and we know the story but we don't necessarily there's no halo there's nothing necessarily signifying that um, but you have the version of the rocks it's set in this like very rock kind of almost everyday scene but yet it's a throne you know it's, it's kind of unique you have this very still water representing the purity of the Virgin Mary, but also the blessing of St. John. Um, the, the guardian angel, that's the obvious difference, is that she's, well, Gabriel, pointing to John. Uh, there's debate on who that angel is, but, um, and the pointing is just to the same thing that Christ is doing as a blessing, and it's kind of just directing your attention that way. Um, there's a lot of different controversy over what exactly does that mean, and these two paintings. Um, why is the angel looking at us? Why is the other one not? And, you know, it can mean different things. Possibly more the angels looking at the viewer. Some people say from the art term is essentially just to draw the viewer in and just to have that connection with the viewer. Um, and an angel is above this world, so it may, would make sense that the angel would look and not necessarily... Um, the other figures in it. Um, but Da Vinci, you can also see in this painting, there are, there's this flora and botanical stuff going on in the background, like Botticelli, this like kind of rebirth of uh, plant matter. Uh, there's also a difference in the two between there is that the plant matter in the Da Vinci's is very accurate and but and precise in actual plants where this one is not. This one is more just kind of recreated and you can see when you, know, when you point that out that that's different. There's even this um, idea that back in here this little palm tree kind of thing represents a clamshell which would be um, similar to the birth of Venus with that coming out of that shell. Um, but da Vinci was very concerned about the rocks um, so this painting was actually a kind of a controversial painting for many reasons. Um, also because trying to signify that there are shells and crustaceans found in rocks that aren't near the ocean or in the ocean. And how does this happen? Which is was kind of going against that idea of the um, short creation of the earth, you know, which didn't take just a few days and possibly a long, long time, billions or millions of years. Um, so Da Vinci was kind of recognizing that and and um, it's not like he came up with that idea on his own. This was, you know, obviously a idea that's been around for a while and, but he was kind of throwing it in the church's face, if you want to say, um, with this painting. So, um, that's another reason why, and you can, and art historians can interpret this in so many different ways. You can say that's not a clamshell at all, and this has nothing to do with it, but <clears throat> that's the job as a historian. They go back into writings, and Da Vinci kept these journals and notes, and it was something that he expressed in his idea right before he made this painting. So they're just kind of connecting the dots. Doesn't mean that that's necessarily the case. Um, but moving forward. And Da Vinci had this like underpainting. We kind of talked about that on this one, which is another reason why they're not really sure the, the ethnicity of it. Um, these are other images created from the Virgin of the Rocks. So this is another reason why it's really hard to tell what's a Da Vinci and what is not. He had a school that he taught people to paint like him, and he was so inspirational and inspiring in these paintings that many people copied his style and copied his ideas and his themes and his themes were unique and different you know with this everyday kind of attitude being taken into the religious sector and you can see same kind of thing you have this religious idea it's still John and Jesus and Mary and you have this reference to um, John and Jesus escaping from the uh, massacre of the innocents and that's what Mary's doing right here is she's pointing to this um, passage. So in the Virgin of the Rocks, the angel is pointing to that idea of this is a kind of like painting that's supposed to be 
forewarning of this idea that John and Jesus are going to have to escape from the Massacre of the Innocents. And this painting is reference to that passage that Gabriel the angel had signified. Anyway, all these little connections. But you can see in the background just the way it's set up with this like Leonardo da Vinci kind of style background and then the same thing in here. Um, the Christ children and John embracing, you know, they... I, I know it seems like they're really awkward paintings and the babies look really weird and Madonna has her breast hanging out and all this weird stuff that seems abnormal for us to look at. But for the time, this was extremely common. And if you look at a lot of paintings from the Renaissance, you will see a ton of images like this, which maybe explains some of the art you see later when they kind of go back to these weird kind of setups and then recreate them in their own way. Um, moving on. Um, this is Michael. This is not Michelangelo, but it's his Pieta, which is a, a subject matter that Michelangelo did. And you have obviously the Virgin Mary with Christ, and this is when Christ, you know, obviously has died. Um, this is before the resurrection, but and you can see that in these paintings, they're trying to capture that idea of the grief and the loss and the death and how the suffering, right, and how horrible that this is. And, and this one right here is actually very famous. These are both from the Middle Ages, but this one is the super common image. You might have seen it. Um, and this is Michelangelo's. So you can see that it is significantly different than the others. When you look at these, you don't feel, even though they're supposed to be so empathetic and like passionate of this loss, when you look at this, it just kind of makes you feel that so much more. This is very large. This is in the Vatican. It is, um, well, St. Peter's Basilica, but which is part of the Vatican, but um, it is more than life size uh, when you view it you're kind of viewing it from afar like that so it's behind glass and um, it's not on a giant monumental scale it is you know more typical to life size but just a little bit larger than life size but it is up on a pedestal and you're looking at it from afar you can't see it all the way in the round you can only view it from the front with the lighting behind bulletproof glass but you can see that it is a Michelangelo was best at being a sculpture, a sculptor and sculpting out of marble. This is one solid block of marble, which is truly impressive. Nothing, none of it was pieced together. So because you can't see it in the round, they have a replica of it, a little tiny one that you can look at so you can see Christ's face in, in the 3D. This is not the tiny replica, this is the big one, but you can kind of get a good idea of, you know, just the way it was carved and all those details in the hair and, you know, just kind of the beauty of it. 